Hello everybody, uh, this is going to be a quick little tutorial on how to make the spaceships from the space exploration mod for Factorio. Uh, this tutorial is going to cover basic ship building, uh, basic circuitry, and it is recommended that you are uh, somewhat familiar with trains before continuing with this tutorial as a lot of the references and analogies are going to be with the trains. So uh, beyond that guys, let's get into it. I also did want to mention just real quickly, there will be timestamps down in the description if you guys want to skip parts. Okay, this is the construction and components chapter of the video, so uh, let's just get right into it. I did want to mention before we get building, it is a very good idea to have um, liquid rocket fuel nearby, uh, as your spaceship will not be able to fly without it. So um, it might be a good idea to just get a little simple setup like this going before you start building your spaceship. But uh, beyond that, let's get started. Okay, so the very first component let's cover is the floor. So this is very similar to any other floor in the game. It's it works the same. Place it however you like. Uh, this is gonna this is gonna be how your spaceship is gonna shape out. So if you want to add any cool tail fins or you know some kind of wings or something, this is gonna be where you want to incorporate those designs. If you wanted to do like a little wing pattern like this or something like that, I don't know. Let's go with that. That looks good. Cool. So we have our floors done. Great. Second component is going to be the wall. Now these are pretty simple components. You're just going to surround the uh, edge of your spaceship. Oops. You also can't have any gaps uh, anywhere. Even these little, this little thing right here, uh, this can be confusing. This does not count as a solid wall. It has to be connected like this. So just be careful when you're building stuff like that. If your um, terminal doesn't build the spaceship properly, that might be what's causing it. So uh, I'm just going to build this up real quick, and then I will be right back. Great. So now we have a rough shape for our ship. You're also going to want to leave uh, where the engines are going to go open. Uh, you're going to want to be able to place the engines down here later, so make sure you leave yourself a little bit of space. And then also, I didn't mention it, uh, but if you want to, you can use doors, these spaceship doors, if you want to add you know, doors between components or just doors to get out of your ship. Uh, yeah. But beyond that, let's move to the next section. Okay, so the next component we're going to touch on is the spaceship console. So how to use this is you can put it anywhere on your spaceship that highlights green. It doesn't really matter where. So it's going to do a quick little scan like that, and it'll pull open this little UI menu here. So you can see up at the top, it says uh, integrity st status invalid. So what this means is there's a hole in your ship. <laughs> so if you look, it'll highlight the walls in red because you have, you're missing walls back here. So we're going to touch on this guy a little bit more, but I'm just going to plop it down just for now so we can get a kind of quick idea of uh, the integrity and walls system. Great. So the next part, we're going to touch on the engines. So these are very, very simple. All you do is just going to plop them in that little hole I had you guys leave. You're going to then uh, take a little fuel tank. Uh, you can put however many you want. I typically do more than one. Although, do be warned, these hold 100,000 fuel each, so they are pretty big and you're just gonna pipe them up like that very simple nothing crazy about it um, and then if you want to uh, when you're ready to fill up you can connect this underground pipe to a space underground pipe just like this and you can have a ground pipe out here and that will fuel your spaceship great so now you may be wondering how do we generate power because you're going to need power as you're flying through space you're gonna need to power your lasers to fend off the meteorites that uh, just kind of fall and hit your spaceship as you travel so power generation is important and the simplest way to do it is by using these fluid isothermic generators they don't take up a lot of space how they work is basically you just feed rocket fuel in one side and it generates two megawatts very simple very straightforward you can use the solar panels i tend to not because they're very space inefficient i find um but i'm sure you could work them in uh next just plug all that into a power pylon or a power line of your choosing and there you go you have power uh, it's also worth noting it's probably a good idea to slap a few accumulators on your ship as these guys are not very powerful so you're gonna be relying off of a uh, battery power for a lot of your flying great now we're just about done with the ship all we have to do is add our lasers wherever you can fit them I'm just gonna slap a few here maybe one there sure that looks good uh, you may ask in the comments, like, how many lasers should I have? 
And the answer is, it kind of depends on how fast you're going. So, if you go slow through space, you really don't need a ton of lasers, uh, as, like, a few can handle the meteors pretty well. But if you go faster, uh, you're going to need more defense. Maybe even the shield projector once you unlock it. I don't have it unlocked. This is a very basic tutorial. But... Uh, yeah, that's kind of how, that's the rule of thumb. The faster you want to go, the more protection to the front of your ship you're going to want to have. Great, now your ship is ready to go. This is not automatic, I will note. This is a fully player-controlled ship, but it will work. So we can open the terminal here to get this little menu, and we're going to do a start integrity check. So everything is good, ship integrity is good, we don't have any holes anywhere, we don't have any weird corner pieces. That's good. So this whole stress, uh... Let's, let's talk about this little spaceship panel over here, and I'll kind of break down each little section. So this hull stress is um, the stress of, like, the hull, and you can kind of see there. It's calculated by how many walls and ship uh, floors and things you have. Uh, so you can level this up eventually. Uh, right now, I, do, I have it, I think, at the base level, but uh, you can definitely level this up. So if you're kind of sad that you can't build a very big ship, don't worry. You will be able to level up that ability later down the line. I believe it's the uh, Spaceship Integrity. So yes, this is the upgrade path that you're going to want to follow Yeah, as you want to build bigger and bigger ships. The next thing is the Container Stress. So what this stress is, it's basically a representation of how many containers you have on board. Pretty, pretty verbatim. Uh, so if I add, so let's look here. So we have 75 container stress just from the fuel tanks. Uh, if I were to add maybe, I don't know, five little uh, provider chests and we reevaluate, you can see the stress went up quite a bit. So these this goes up very quickly. But enough about container stress. We want to get this bad boy into space. So let's go ahead and do that now. So we're going to open the spaceship console for our little, uh, our little UI here. We're going to do one more check just to make sure everything is good once we are good there. We're going to open the speed and destination panels. So the speed, I'm just going to have you guys punch in a thousand on all three of these just for now. Um, we can work on these later in the circuit section, but for now a thousand is a pretty standard speed. The launch energy is going to be how much uh, fuel and megajoules it takes to get off, or I guess gigajoules, to get off the planet or orbit that you're currently on. It's a lot more expensive to fly off of surfaces than it is to leave from orbit. I believe to leave Novice, it's about 300 gigajoules, and to leave Novice Orbit, it's about 17. So, a little recommendation is, if you don't need to, it's probably better to keep your spaceships, well, in space. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, next thing is going to be the destination category. This is very similar to the rockets. Let's just pick somewhere close, because I don't have a ton of fuel on me. And let's launch. Great. Now we're flying there. And if you want to watch yourself actually move, instead of just particles move around you you can open the little uh universe explorer here and kind of watch yourself fly along here very very cool so we have arrived to our friendly neighbor digi i believe that's how you say that uh so how we're gonna anchor uh we're gonna hit this little anchor button and it's pretty self-explanatory uh, this isn't orbit so there's probably not gonna be anything here um but let's just go ahead and anchor right here so now we are currently um on the orbit of this planet you can spectate us from the planet viewer great so we got from planet a to planet b welcome back everybody this is now chapter two of the spaceship tutorial we're now covering spaceship automation now you may be wondering what the heck do you have a train on the screen for that's not a spaceship and you're right but I think trains and spaceships are very, very similar, and this is kind of the analogy that helped me understand how to, like, build these uh, complex spaceships with complex routes and things. So I'm going to give you guys kind of the same um, intuition I have about spaceships. So our goal here is we have a very, very simple train station, and I've set up a few conditions for us. We are going to stop at train station A, and we are going to fill up 100 circuits, and then we're going to bring them over to B. And we're going to empty them out. Okay? So, automatically, if we turn this guy on and make this do things, we can see... Oh, and we're at 100, and now we're moving. Great. So, now we're moving over here, and we're going to come back to this station, and we're going to unload, and this condition is just about true. Bam. And now we're going back to the starting position. So, we're going to... What our goal today is we're going to try to replicate this similar style of a path 
except in the spaceships. It's very, very simple. Okay, so now I've gutted most of the ships, so we have a little bit of room for our uh, logic control. Uh, but before we dive into all that, I do have to explain a few things about the terminal itself to you guys. So first of all, let's go over the signals that it outputs. So the output is going to be this little hitbox in the back here. Uh, you can open this up, it's basically just a constant combinator. Uh, so these signals are going to tell you a few different things. So this signal, this is the spaceship's ID. So when um, you get little alerts on the map here that your turrets have engaged, it'll say spaceship blank has uh, started shooting at lasers, you know. So if this one started to shoot at lasers, I'd get alerts. Spaceship 10 is doing that. So it's kind of a way to like keep track of the spaceships. Uh, this is the speed signal. It's negative two. That's just a sort of case for when we're not moving. You don't have to worry about that. Um, we'll also cover that a little bit later. Uh, distance. This is just how long you have left until you get to planets. I typically don't use this signal, nor this one. Uh, I don't typically use D either. This is a asteroid density signal. So this raises as there's more asteroids. So you could configure some kind of system using this. I typically don't, but feel free to get creative. The next signal we're going to talk about is the A signal. So this is the anchor signal. Very uh, simple to think about. So what this signal is telling you, it's where where the spaceship is. So this uh, signal, if we open it up, it's 1126. And if we pop into the planet viewer, oh, automation signal, 1126. So that's kind of a planet's ID, sort of. So we can, it's kind of like a train station name, if that is a more helpful analogy. As this is train station A, novice is space station stop 1126, if that makes sense. Uh, the next signal we are going to talk about is this one. This is the destination signal, and this is the part I really wanted to specify because a lot of tutorials really skip over this part, and it gave me quite a big headache. So this is where your ship is going to next. So right now we have it also 1126 because if we pop this open... Our destination is selected to novice, but if we were to say pick, I don't know, maybe EO Street, then if we look at our destination signal, now we're 1207. So a thing to note with these, uh, when you're picking signals for automation, if you are going to, for say, a, uh, let's see, a moon, make sure that uh, you're using moon signals. The terminal does it. Moon signal. So if you put a planet signal here, like a, so these are your different signals. So if you put a planet system here and put the same ID, it will not work. What will happen is you'll get kind of stuck in this weird uh, loop and your ship will just kind of tread water. So be very careful of that. Uh, if you're going to a sun, make sure you have the sun signal. If you're going to an orbit, make sure you have the orbit asteroid, you know, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, yeah, so that should cover the signals of the output, so let's jump into the input. Okay, so instead of just listing out all the potential signals and all the things that you can do with a uh, spaceship terminal, I'm just going to show you guys the ones that you really only need to get there. If you want to learn the other ones, I will link the video that taught me how to do spaceships, but uh, for now I'm just going to keep it relatively simple here. So let's try to recreate this block of quote-unquote train code so we have uh, a station name we have a condition and we're gonna leave when this is done okay so let's try to replicate that with our little uh, decider combinators so if we sort of pick apart the information in this train block here we can tell that we need to uh, figure out a few things first so this train stop is called A. So A is the destination. So we need to get some sort of signal sent out as destination. So let's pick somewhere in the solar system. Maybe somewhere I already have a fuel plant so we don't get stranded. Sure, let's do this asteroid belt. So the signal is going to be 1140. So we're going to want to go to 1140. And uh, as I clarified earlier, make sure you use the proper asteroid belt signal. Great, so now we know where we're going. Now the spaceship doesn't know when to launch, so you also need to feed a launch signal. You can just do keep this at one, that's fine. Great, so we know where we're going, and we know we have to launch to get there. Great, but that doesn't really help us much with the circuit condition here. 
This will send it to the asteroid belt, and it'll get stuck there. And we don't want that. That's not very helpful. So let's add in a little bit of condition here. So we have this simple little uh, decider combinator that's just going to say, if we have more than or equal to 100 green circuits, we're going to output a little green check. Now, this is great. So what we're going to do is we're then going to take another decider combinator and uh, maybe put them right here. I'll put them right here so you guys don't have to zoom too far in to see which wires are going where. So let's uh, output this constant combinator here to this guy. And then we're going to also output this to this guy. So let's then say uh, when check mark is equal to 1, we are going to allow everything through. So this everything signal at the input count, uh, once these, see how there's these input signals? Once this condition is true, it's just going to let everything that's being passed in out. Which is great because then we have a control of where to go and when to launch. So our spaceship will now launch when we have at least 100 electronic circuits in the ship. Now that's great. This is very simple, but there are a few other things to consider with the spaceship. So you do need fuel to get from, place, uh, from one place to another. So another condition I like to throw on there is maybe, I don't know. Let's say as long as we have uh, maybe 100,000 fuel, we're going to output another green check. And now we're going to update our launch condition from one tick to two. It's very simple. So you can just keep adding these for whatever. You can get creative with this. Um, you can really, really do anything with these. But this is, this is the pretty basic uh, layout. So you have your uh, where to go and launch signals coming in here. You have, you're checking if some container has at least, um, well, it moved all the circuits over already. <laughs> so you're checking if some container has at least 100, which this container does. So if we feed that an input, this is now outputting a check mark. So we have one check mark in here, but we need two to launch, which means that our f spaceship doesn't have enough fuel. So you can get really creative with these. Um, what I like to think of is this little block here is basically this. It's That's kind of the way of thinking of it. And you can copy and paste these and use them on different ships. I typically build mine a little bit more compactly as spaceships don't have a lot of space. <laughs> but um, this is just for demonstration. But you can get really compact with these and get really complex. Uh, so... Let's now get a um, this train code block here. The Once we're empty, we are going to come back. So let's do that over here. So first, of, first and foremost, let's also remember where we need to go. So th we're thinking in terms of we have just landed at this asteroid belt. And all of our cargo has been unloaded, right? So now we need to tell it, oh, okay, well now you need to go back to Novice. So we're going to have novice, which is 1126. Also, worth noting, I'm not sure if this will be the same for you. This is mine. Uh, just make sure it matches up with the planet that you're actually going to. Uh, and then we just need our little launch signal again. Great. And we can just say, instead of this guy, we can just copy and paste it almost. And we can just say, is equal to zero. And that will output a check mark. Great. And we can just copy this guy again. And we can change it to 1. So once the spaceship is out of fuel, uh, we are going to send the check mark. So you can see now that the output signals are being sent because we don't have anything. So you also have to be careful with these because you can have these improperly activate. So notice how this should only activate uh, when we're on... The asteroid belt right so this is this is a problem because you don't want to be going novice 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 that's not helpful so what we can do is we can add a check to make sure if i can place this there we go we can make sure that we are on the right anchored planet so if we are on um i believe my asteroid belt is 11 30 we can add another check condition for that because 
and that 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 saves us from having these confusing loops so these anchor signals are very useful in uh helping you know the ships not get lost and not get stuck in these weird infinite like flying loops so you just feed all that into this guy and once you have all this good to go you are just gonna take um you're just gonna take the output of this one that is sending everything through and you're just gonna plug it directly i can't reach but you would just plug it directly into the input side of the console, which is the bigger hitbox here. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and move these into the ship. I'm not going to change them. I'm just going to make them a little bit more compact so they fit in here. And I'm going to show you guys what that looks like. Okay, so I've wired everything up. Um, it might be a little hard to tell what's going on here. Uh, I am all for blue wire 2024. Uh, make sure you get that vote in. Uh, but anyways, I'll try my best to explain what's going on here. So I have the fuel tanks and the storage tank connected to the um, inputs of our conditions on both sides. I've also swapped the uh, check mark on this little train block or uh, spaceship block here to green squares just um, to help prevent confusion. So what we should be uh, we should be ready to go here. These should be good. Uh, so we, we have our conditions. You should check that the input signal of the actual launch uh, combinator is only being fed these uh, three signals. Your checks, your launch, and your destination. If you're being fed other stuff, your wiring is set up impro improperly, and that's going to cause problems. So when you're done wiring, make sure that uh, the input on this guy is only um, these three signals. So we can tell that we, uh, we are on the right planet. We are on novice, so we're getting a green check mark here. We have 100,000 fuel or more, so we're getting a green check mark here. So the only thing left that we don't have is 100 or more circuits in our chest. So let's go ahead and drop those in there. Uh-oh, we're not taking off. This is fine. This is supposed to happen because we haven't plugged in anything yet. So now this is where we deal with the input. So we're going to take the output of the little everything combinators here. You can attach them together because they will never fire at the same time unless you set it up wrong. So you can share wire. And there we go. So now we should be in orbit. Now what is happening? Ah, I have found the issue. Our asteroid belt signal is not 1130. It is 1140. So, unfortunately, this condition will not fire again, but we can kind of trick it by just setting this equal to 2 really quick. And that should... Oh, I guess it would be set to 1, because there's only 1. Output signals. Now we're set up to go to the right place. I don't know why we're not going. But hey, now we're moving. So hopefully... When we get to a our destination, which is here, uh, I will show you guys what will happen when our cargo is unloaded. Okay, welcome back. We are currently orbiting the um, asteroid belt here. Now, the ship doesn't really know where to go. And this is a problem that uh, we solve with these little things called clamps. So your ship will only travel between planets, and unless you specify where to go, it will not know where to land. So we don't want to have to use this manual anchoring system every time. That sucks. Nobody likes that. So what instead we're going to do is we're going to take our little ship anchor here. And, uh, not design the ship very well here. Uh, we can just slap it somewhere. It doesn't particularly matter. Great, and just make sure that counts. Cool. So this, what you're going to want to do with this guy is uh, you can kind of set this little signal in this clamp to be your spaceship's special number. So if I set this guy to 4, um, this will only attach to ground clamps with that same output signal of 4, right? So if we have the ours set to four and then where we're landing is set to four, well then uh, we can we can get away with landing. So let's just slap one here. I don't believe I have one here. Oh, I do. Okay, great. Okay, cool. So let's set this guy's signal to four as well. Cool. Why haven't we landed? Oh no, something went wrong. Okay, that's fine. That's supposed to happen as well. 
So how we're going to solve that is we're going to get back in our character view here. And we're just going to add one more little constant combinator here to the ship. And this one is going to be very, very simple. You're just telling the ship, hey, these clamps are okay. So you're going to take your spaceship clamp signal, and you're going to change that to whatever you assigned it to. And then you're going to get the blue uh, ground signal, and make sure these are pointing the right way, like which what they are actually pointing in game. And we're going to set that to 4. Great. So now we're outputting that, and now as soon as I plug this in, we should know where to park. Look at that. Great, we've parked. Great, and now that we're here, we're just going to make sure that our second condition will work, our return condition. So we are currently on the asteroid belt, so we are getting a green square from this guy. And the only other condition we have for this block is that we have no circuits on board. So let's go ahead and have some robots move those away. So now, the second this chest is empty, we should take off. And there we go. Great. And we're moving. And now we are heading back to Novice. And this spaceship, unless you turn off these constant combinators, uh, it will continue doing this loop. This Think of this output button as the sort of automatic slash manual switch on the train. If you want to pause your spaceship, work on it, upgrade it, uh, do whatever, uh, just go ahead and turn these, these two guys off. Uh, and then when you're ready to fly again, you can just turn it back on, and it should go automatically. Okay, guys, that's basically the whole tutorial. That's all I really wanted to show you. Um, if you want to add more stops, like if you wanted a spaceship to have a third stop, you could just add a third block of these and have the second one go to the third and the third one go back to the first, and it'll keep doing that loop until you tell it not to. Uh, one more thing I did want to touch on as I did mention I would cover it later in the video. Uh, so we're going to cover that speed signal just real quick. So there's two um, kind of, there's a few ways to do it. Uh, I'm going to show you the easiest way and then I'm going to show you the way I do it. So the easiest way is this little constant combinator that you're feeding um, the anchor signals in. You can just pass the speed in directly, whatever you want it to be right here. So if you want like control of this um, if you want to be you know in full control this is probably going to be your approach um, however what I use on most of my ships is this little circuit right here so what this little circuit does is it basically reads how much power your batteries have and it will slow the ship down depending on that factor so if you know the batteries are at 50% we're only going to be going about 500 instead of a thousand but if they're full, we're going to go full speed at 1,000. Um, so what you can do is you can set this. Um, so say if you want to go 3,000, you would set this to 30. And then you're just going to multiply it by um, the charge that the batteries have. So this is very simple. You can just plug oh, this guy. And um, yeah, so this is a dead battery. That does not help us much. <laughs> Um, but if this were to get some sort of power here, uh, you can, you can see how this signal will change here. So we can output to here. So we have a output signal of A, and once this gets to 1%, we're going to have 30 times 1, which will be a speed of 30. So this is kind of like a cool dynamic way to change your speed depending on how full your batteries are. So you can do the asteroid density signal to do something similar, but I find this is just a little easier. So um, yeah, beyond that guys, I hope your ship building goes well, and uh, if you have a question, go ahead and throw it down in the comments, and I will catch you in the next one. Peace out.